Good evening, everybody. Yes, uh, I welcome you all to the Spark session today. So today webinar is going to concentrate on understanding what is the use of Spark and uh, what is Spark streaming and why Spark is very much important in the big data processing. Right. So myself, uh, this is Sagar, and uh, I'll be going over the complete session today. So maybe a little quick introduction about me. Uh, I myself have around a decade years of experience uh, overall in the enterprise platform and uh, along with this I also involved in the big data, big data technologies for almost five years now. Okay, and this particular webinar is coming to you from uh, Edureka. I think most of you will be aware of Edureka. We are one of the global online trading providers. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see what are the objectives of the session today. So objectives of the today's session is going to be uh, understanding on uh, what is big data and what is Spark and why Spark and uh, what are the features of Spark and also a little bit of the scale of overview and now finally coming up and understanding uh, a, a demo on the Spark stream. So just to get a feel on uh, how Spark streaming works, etc. all other things. So and I think everybody knows what is big data, right? So big data is a basic technology which provides, uh, which we can put in a very uh, straightforward definition called as lots of data, right? So technically, if you see today, we basically handle more than terabytes of data. In fact, more than terabytes. I would even say terabytes, it, it crosses to another extent, right? And across the globe, uh, all the organizations now started using data to a very great extent. And also one of the important thing is processing of this data on real-time analysis is becoming challenging these days. So when you say real-time analysis, so uh, the one of the biggest problem with the technologies like Hadoop and etc. is they are batch-oriented technologies. When we say as batch-oriented technologies, so they basically uh, take some amount of time for processing the applications. So they take some huge amount of time for processing any particular applications. So today we expect the application to be processed on the fly. So on a very near real time scenario. So whenever the data comes up, so what we basically try to do now is uh, we want to process the data as it is it's coming. So for example, a telecommunication system where we need to be in a position to say that uh, this particular tower is having this issue, right? Can we rectify it immediately instead of doing a batch processing job? Right. So that's why basically Spark comes up in the picture. So the real intention of using a technology like Spark is to do all the all the processing which we do with Hadoop kind of technology in a real time scenario. In a real time processing, in fact, I won't say real time scenario, in a real time processing. So the, the, the easiest way of putting a line of difference between the Hadoop and the Spark is the only one thing. The Hadoop runs everything in a batch oriented perspective, whereas the Spark runs everything in a real-time scenario when you say real-time it's, it's a near real-time I won't say it's exact real-time somewhere near real-time near real-time means uh, maybe when an event occurs it may not be uh, doing the processing as soon as the event occurred maybe it might be doing in a span of uh, one or two minutes of time but definitely it is going to be uh, extremely faster compared to your map reduce. okay so I will tell you why it is extremely faster and also we'll see an example of why this is extremely faster. Okay, fine. So one of the important things of Spark is, so Spark is actually, and uh, so when we come up to a definition of the Spark, so Spark is basically an in-memory computing cluster system. When you say an in-memory computing cluster system, so it's going to process everything is in in-memory. And the advantages of Spark is there is no such a thing like you need to be good in Hadoop to understand Spark. Okay, Spark itself is having its own cluster. Okay, so Spark is coming separately outside Hadoop. So you can learn Spark without any knowledge on Hadoop. At the same time, you can also execute Spark along with Hadoop. So Spark provides you both options. Okay, so that's the one of the most important things of in the Spark. The Spark itself comes up with its own cluster. Spark itself is having its own cluster where you can start working on it. So you can work on a Spark without even any knowledge on Hadoop. Okay, there is absolutely no knowledge required on Hadoop to work on Spark. At the same time, if you want to use Spark along with Hadoop, even Spark can also be used in that way, right? There is Yarn. Hadoop is having a Yarn component which can execute Spark on its own cluster. So it comes with both configurations, right? For if, if a person comes back and says, I don't know Hadoop, fine, we, Spark is having its cluster. 
and if another set of community says okay i am very i'm very good in adobe can spark support me yes spark is going to even support that also so in both ways so okay uh, spark can be used with hadoop or without that right it completely depends on your requirement so you can completely avoid uh, you can completely avoid your hadoop ecosystem if you don't know hadoop at all okay so it's up to you to use so that's the way spark has been built up right so if a project is started from the scratch you can use spark without even having any knowledge on hadoop without even touching hadoop but if a project is already running in hadoop for a long time and you want a migration from hadoop to spark even that also is supported so it supports in both the way right so spark doesn't need hadoop at all to work on it there is no relation between spark and hadoop if there is a project which is built on hadoop if it has to be migrated to spark even that also is be supported so it, it supports in both ways with hadoop as well as without hadoop so based on your requirement you can always take it on okay fine so spark is one of the again one of the hadoop uh, big data frameworks like what your hadoop passing etc okay so spark is a framework which again runs in a multi clustered environment right not using hadoop what is the downside there is nothing like no downside at all pramesh there is no downside like as i said there is absolutely no downside uh, is, spark is having its own cluster spark is having its way of defining the data spark is having its core logic there is absolutely no downside in uh, in like with hadoop or without hadoop the thing is that the lot of the existing projects are already running in hadoop okay is there a lot of lot of projects is already running in hadoop so in order to migrate from hadoop uh, so if you are already running in hadoop so you are you will be obviously expecting you are uh, spark to be supporting hadoop that's all if you are starting as a very fresh one there is no need to have hadoop and it is as simple as that there is no downside as such and if i am an organization if i have a data in hdfs so why i have to move the data again to spark right so i will ask a question myself why i have to do that can spark can come and run here so that's what my question right why i have to move my all my data which is there for last 5 to 6 years right so that's what spark does fine you mean spark is an alternative to hadoop i never so, uh, so spark is see there are 22 ways of looking into the big data system one is data and one is data processing one is data storage and one is data processing right so only two that only two things are okay so this is without spark we have we have hadoop to store the data okay and we are map produced to store processing right so this by doing the processing with the map reduce uh, basically it takes lot of time because it is batch right so this spark comes back and says i can do data processing better than hadoop because uh, better than map reduce so i will be faster in data processing right so this is the actual intention of spark the spark's actual intention is to improve the performance of data processing extremely extremely faster right so the data storage still has to be in hadoop or not it's up to your call okay you want to be in hadoop or in a spark cluster it's up to your call you can either have in a hadoop cluster or a spark cluster but the data processing is technically which has been done with map reduce it is slower because of the batch processing which can be extremely improved with the help of the spark the spark basically results in a faster data processing so only two ways of looking into that right if spark is faster why wouldn't we migrate or upgrade to spark from hadoop so that's what the point we are trying to say parmesh if i have my five years of data in the data storage why i need to put all the five years of data into the spark cluster so spark can i need data processing to be faster i don't want the data storage i never ever worried about this scenario right i i never even worried on this there is no point in worrying on this this is a this is a physical data storage why you need to worry about this right? there is nothing it's just a data dump right so you have to upgrade yourself from here you don't want to worry anything on here right so why you have to worry about that so you need to 
bring up a person in the data processing side right so hadoop still remains hadoop in the sense that's what the point i'm trying to say hadoop is having two sections one is called as data storage one is called as data storage and one is called as data processing right i will be saying two options data storage and data processing there is absolutely no problem here nobody is having any problem here i am never worried also because this is just a data storage as nothing is going to happen here so data processing is the main concern the map reduce is the main concern so this algorithm basically i am trying to replace with spark so spark is going to do the so data processing extremely extremely faster so that's what the that's what the thing we are trying to do that's what the thing we are trying to achieve that's what our main intention we never ever worried about the data storage data right so that, that they need be wherever you want okay that so we are really worried on the data processing so if you given a given a data at any point of time uh, fetch me the last top 10 employees is an issue for me right that's the important thing okay So you got a you you are got an understanding of what basically is Spark test, right? Okay. I'm learning closure. Can you please explain the difference between Spark and closure? Completely different, Nitin. There is no such thing. Closure is totally different technology compared to Spark. Closure is based on Storm. Spark works on Scala. That's the only difference, and uh, it's totally totally different. You can't even compare both of them. What is it? Closure is used for completely different technology called Storm, and Spark is completely developed on a technology called a Scala. Okay, yeah. So I, I hope now everybody have got an understanding of why to use Spark, right? Is HBase a substitute of Spark? There is absolutely no relation between HBase and all here. Cannot. HBase is again another data storage, so that is totally outside the context. Spark is we are targeting Spark to replace MapReduce. That's the primary intention. For data storage, Spark is using HDFS in Spark cluster. Actually, it's a Spark cluster and HDF Hadoop cluster. Both the two are different. Spark cluster is a different component. Spark cluster and Hadoop cluster both are different. There is no difference. There is no relation between them, right? So, do we want the data to be stored in Hadoop cluster or the Spark cluster? It's your choice, right? It's up to you. There is no such thing like data should be stored in Spark cluster, Hadoop cluster, right? That's the same thing apply with HBase. I think HBase cluster is different from Hadoop cluster. Okay, Kunal, I think HBase is it's a component running on top of the Hadoop cluster. There is no such there is no thing called as HBase cluster. HBase is a component running in Hadoop cluster. Fine. We we never have a concept called HBase cluster. We have only a concept called as Hadoop cluster, and HBase is a component running in Hadoop. H space cannot run without Hadoop. Where to store data in uh, Spark uh, cluster? Okay, Spark cluster is again like an Hadoop cluster. Our Hadoop cluster stores in system. The Spark cluster also stores in system. Right, as simple as that. There is nothing. So the data will be actually uh, finally data will be always stored as a part of the file system. Whereas Hadoop will will provide a different way of storing the file. Spark provides its own way of storing the file. End of the day, both will be stored in the file system. So, if you typically ask me, I, ne I we never even need to worry about it's a Spark cluster or Hadoop cluster. We need to worry only about under data processing. I sh we should never worry about this particular person because this is heavily proven with Hadoop cluster. Hadoop cluster is heavily proven to a very great extent. Heavily proven and used. So there is no point in discussing on whether we need to put the data in Spark cluster or Hadoop cluster. If you, if given an opportunity at any point of time, we should always prefer Hadoop cluster because of Hadoop cluster is the most widely used across the globe today. The processing of the data is the most important challenge we have. Okay? Can we access HBS table while processing Spark? We can access HBS table in MapReduce program. So Ravi, uh, the point what we are trying to say is that MapReduce and Spark is basically a program. Which is accessing an external entity called as an edge base. So for them, that they never worry about end of the day for a map reduce or a spark. They are reading in one file, they are writing to another file. That's all they for for them. That is the knowledge they have. They think I am reading from this file, I am writing to that file. The edge base, the Hadoop, or the entities are the different sections of how we are going to store the data. 
but for a map reduce and for a spark for them is only one thing i'm reading from this location writing to that location so they never worry about that's an h space or etc all the other things okay fine ravi so you can whatever a map produce can do the complete thing is spark can is spark can in a fast way fine ravi a spark can spark can do whatever a map produce can do in an extremely fast way because it's going to execute everything in memory how the data has been splitted in the spark cluster okay sunil so actually that is um, Many, that means uh, we are not going to concentrate heavily on the Spark cluster because we are going to concentrate only on the data processing using Spark. When you join as part of the course, we will explain you in detail of what goes in the Spark cluster. Okay. So next, I am going to continue on. Uh, so because that's totally out. I, because this particular one hour of session, I am not going to concentrate on Spark cluster because we, I, this is heavily concentrated only on understanding how much faster when you do a data processing with Spark. Okay, because Spark cluster itself is having a very big architecture and orientation, which might take a very long perspective to understand how the data stores inside, and that is outside the scope of our particular session. Today's session is to only concentrate on how much faster data processing can be done with Spark. Okay, because uh, the data storage in the HDFS or Spark cluster is not going to help us a lot because end of the day it's just a file system. Okay, so we'll go there actually. is it possible to use spark cluster data in ivan pick so to you all you all uh, so only one thing i'm trying to say is spark is data processing with map with by replacing map reduce pick hive h space etc where and all you can use map reduce can be used replaced by spark okay so this is what we are trying to say we are trying to replace map reduce with spark so if if map reduce can be used with hive if map reduce can be used with pick if map reduce can be used with edge space if map reduce can be used with etc all the areas spark can use because just changing the way how the data processing should work okay so there is no such thing like that fine so a spark can be typically written in the following programs a spark can be written in the java python and the scala Fine. Uh, a Java means it provides one more advantage called Scala. So Spark can be written in Java, Python, as well as in Scala. Okay. Fine. So Spark, as I said, uh, it's like a, you can run a Spark in different ways. You can run with Hadoop, you can run with Apache Mesos, and also you can run directly with the Spark cluster itself. Okay. But we will see how to do how the processing is going to happen in Spark cluster. Okay. Map produces just as part of Spark now. uh sorry rajkumar i am not understanding okay there's no such thing like map reduce map reduce really you can write the code in java or python okay i think sudhakar your question everything is answered right okay so uh, typically why is why is spark is extremely extremely faster right because spark does in memory computing system okay so typically what happens when you write a map reduce code right i just show you a diagram you will understand what happens so you all have to remember this in mind okay map reduce is a code and that code will be replaced by spark that's all and apart from that whatever uh, whatever we are trying to do uh, whatever you are trying to do with map reduce the in input and external libraries can be done with the spark also so there is nothing like in map reduce and spark is different spark is just going to change the way of how the map reduce is going to work apart from that it's just a different way of programming a different way of execution as simple as that the programming and execution of spark is going to be different so basically what happens you have an input here right so you have an input the input is going to be technically okay so the input is going to be part of your uh, what to say the input can be from the hdfs file system and uh, basically you have your map produce code here and 
and the output can be anywhere right the output can be to HPs or etc all those kind of things the output can be in HPs the output can be to Hadoop file system the output can be to big hive etc you can do that you can technically do whatever you want in the case of it. but the problem in writing the map is code is that okay so the 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 the, pro, the the point is that what is going to happen in the case of uh, your uh, MapReduce code. What's going to happen is a typical MapReduce code is extremely, extremely slower compared to Spark. Why? If you have mapper, let's say this is a map. And let's say this is a radius. So the problem in your HDFS file system is whatever the case for each mapper and reducer, right? Whatever happens between each and every mapper and reducer, it will write to the file system and read from the file system. Whatever the case. For each and every execution, this is the same pattern it is going to follow. It's going to write to the file system and read from the file system. So that's what basically it's going to follow. Okay. So irrespective of whatever the case, it will say when you want to go from one section to another section, the only option you have is write to the file system and read to the file system. Right, so, so this is basically going to delay my complete performance to a greater extent because each and every mapper and each and every reducer says I have to write to the file system and I have to read to the file system, right? So that's what basically they come back and they say, right? So they say uh, for each and every mapper and for each and every reducer, typically I need to write to the file system and read from the file system. So basically it becomes extremely, extremely slower, right? So that's what basically MapReduce does, right? So what spark is trying to say is that instead of you are writing each and every time to the file system okay so what basically going to spark is trying to say is that so spark is trying to say right there are two things spark is going to provide here right so the one thing what spark is uh, trying to do is that so spark comes with the concepts of rdd Okay, it's a very brilliant concept. So I'll come back and say. So RDD is basically what it is going to do is that instead of writing each and every time uh, to the file system, they are going to write each and every time to the in-memory computing system, which they are basically going to type in your RAM. Okay. So so now basically what happens it is basically going to write to your memory so this makes spark as extremely extremely faster compared to your map address. okay so it is basically what it's trying to say instead of writing each and every single time keep on writing to the file system so basically what i am basically going to do is that i am going to work across a cluster of machines and i am going to execute the same thing in the case of your memory so now what happens, this is going to result in an extremely, extremely faster piece, right? Okay, that is one important aspect of what makes Spark as an extremely faster one. Okay, so, uh, so now the next important question to happen is, what happens if my, uh, if my memory crashes or what happens is another important thing, right? So that's where RDD comes up. So what basically Spark is trying to say is that this is the most critical uh, point in the Spark's distribution is. So Spark follows a concept called as DAG, Direct Assembly Graph, okay, a very, very brilliant concept. So what it is trying to say, even before executing a particular task, it will, it will go to draw a graph. It will draw a graph like, let's, let's say these are the step ones. Step one. After step one, you have to do step two. So likewise, it will draw a graph in within itself. Step two, and it will say after step two, you have to execute step three. 
So first of all, it will execute. It will it will remember what are the steps to be done. Okay. So it remembers. Okay, this is the step one, and this is the step two, and this is the step three. Okay. So now what happens during the execution? Okay, this is the most critical point. Why Spark is extremely smarter? It just breaks the program into ten steps. So let's come. Let's consider a typical map to scenario. I have executed nine steps. In a map, I executed nine steps. I got crashed in the tenth tenth step. There is no other option. You need to redo the operation from the scratch. Okay. Whereas in the case of an RDD, which is a resilient distributed data set, if step three crashes, it can go back to step two and start from step two. If step one crashes, okay. So likewise, if if you have nine steps. At any point of time, if one step crashes, it will never go to redo from the scratch. Step nine crashes, it will go to step eight. Or step eight crash, it will go to step seven. Step seven crash, it will go to step six. Step six crash, it will go to step five. Unless or until if all the steps completely crashes, if the complete memory crashes, it's going to resubmit the job into another cluster. Whereas in the case of MapReduce, there is no such steps and all. If you are processing a full file at any point of time, something crashes. It is going to go to the uh, another point. So it has a concept of a save point kind of thing within its memory. So this makes this guy as a very very special compared to anything come available in the market today. Okay, nothing is equal to Spark. Today. Nothing is equal to Spark. Okay, you, you can consider Thais or you can consider any particular thing. This kind of concept is not existing. So it can recover from the crash by itself at any point of time. That's why it is called as a resilient distributed okay. data set. Okay, a very very so call us the right name what happens if memory itself crashes how a memory itself will crash my only a cluster crashes memory crashes right it will it will submit to the other other system in the cluster a cluster will have three the 300 machines If you have 10 nodes in the Spark cluster, each node have more memory, more memory. Yeah, that's fine, Yanishwar. That's a one-time investment. That's a one-time investment. That's fine. That's not a problem. The organizations are ready for that. That's 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 technically fine. If you if you want to use Spark, you should have a minimum of 60 gig RAM machine. That's fine. That's not a problem. You as long as you are getting the processing speed extremely, that's that's absolutely no issues at all. There is no issues in having a system with huge memory. That's that's not like uh, that's not going to be an hundred million dollars of investment, right? So uh, any organization is okay with that. If as long as you are going to get process, right? That's fine. You can you you it's not like we need to have. You must have a huge memory cluster whenever you're using this part. Okay. So if the memory crashes, that's fine. Okay. So it just it's just going to be uh, taking care of submit to that. If you have ten node in the cluster, if one system crashes, memory at all can't crash just like that. If if the, if the cluster crashes, only the memory will crash, right? In that scenario, you can't do MapReduce also. If memory crashes, you can't even do MapReduce also. You can't do anything if memory crashes. The cluster fails. That's all. So you have to obviously go to the second cluster. Okay. So this makes sure Spark is a totally totally okay. The fine. So this makes Spark as a completely usable way of doing it. Fine. So this makes Spark as a totally resilient, totally trusted data set. It provides a complete in-memory computing system. It can it can uh, replicate by itself, and uh, it can do it can maintain the data integrity to a very greater extent compared to the MapReduce, and it's going to be extremely extremely faster. Okay. So the Spark query convert in MapReduce program as we do in uh, Pig R. Right? So Ari and everybody who are who are raising question on Pig and I. Pig and I is just an option of the people who is not able to do MapReduce on Java. Right, so there is no such specific requirement like Spark also should support Pig and I. Right, Pig and I is just a way. If you don't know how to write MapReduce code using Java, so Pig and I can. The Spark is having its own tool called Scala. Okay, so Scala is Scala is far better than compared to Java. Scala is like a code how we write for Pig and I. Okay, what about the other MapReduce job? If the whole memory consumes by uh, uh, Spark? No, no, no. You can't. You we can't decide how much memory can be consumed by Spark. Really. That will never happen any time. If you give a cluster at any point of time, only 40% of the memory can be given to the Spark cluster. 100% memory allocation will never be given. Same thing goes with your Hadoop also, right? 
we Hadoop cannot if you have 250 GB hard disk Hadoop cannot write in complete 250 GB hard disk system will provide only 30 percent to 40 percent that that kind of situation will never come will never ever come to a scenario like whole memory consume because we can't decide right the machine and the machine only decides how much memory can be given only the machine comes to a safer perspective the rest available memory only it will give to the spark the rest of the execution programs okay and you should never reduce member map produce and spark together you just take a call whether you have to write a map produce code or a spark code right so why you want to still go for a map produce code if a particular code is basically trying to run 100% uh, faster right so therefore if you're using spark you will not lose pig and i if you're using hdfs you can use to use spark. So therefore, yes there is no way you are going to use pig and map and i even uh, there is no way you are going to use you are going to lose i okay there is no way you are going to lose i spark is still going to support i spark uses the resource manager for resource utilization if spark is executed in the yarn okay where this yarn comes into picture yeah in hadoop who can run spark dinesh so yarn as who can understand or uh, see if two jobs are submitted at the same time MapReduce job as well as the spark job so hadoop uh, so yarn comes up in the picture and takes in that so yarn can yarn is having the capacity to run both jobs at the same time a spark job as well as the map reduce job so that's where yarn comes up in the picture So my question is spark query which you run on Hadoop will convert spark query into MR. Why we why it has to convert spark query into MapReduce program already? Because spark is not going to write the MapReduce program. So, so there is no there is no way it has to run the MapReduce program. So what is a MapReduce program does? Basically, what is the role of a MapReduce program? A MapReduce program is a code which is going to do one plus one equal to two. You need the same logic who does one plus one. So why I need to again convert it to or convert it to MapReduce program, right? MapReduce is a programming technique, but it is correct to say the same for Spark. Yes, Spark supports apart from that lot of other things also, Jyoti. Spark supports MapReduce and all other things too. Right? Right. Spark again not only supports the thing, okay, all this kind of things. What's the difference between shared memory and RDT? Both are completely different in and there is no such relation. RDT is, a, RDT is a data set. Memory is totally different. RDT is a data set in the memory. Correct. RDT is one of a data set inside the memory. So there is no concept like memory, difference between memory and RDT. If you have memory of 512 GB RAM, then you are going to store the data set there. Okay. So, with this capacity of okay can spark be connected to visualization tools yes yes mike you can connect how many rdds are created for a input depends on your block size uh, the block size of the data. that's that access if you have block size of the data the same thing is good in which use case we should use MapReduce? Over Spark. In all the use cases, you can use MapReduce over Spark, and in most of the use cases, MapReduce cannot be used at all. Fine. In the real-time streaming, MapReduce cannot be used. You can't use a MapReduce in the real-time streaming, right? So you can use only Spark. All those kind of things. Okay. That Spark support transaction as well. A big data itself will not will never support transaction school. So Spark is just a component of big data. So transactions is a different com concept altogether when compared to big data. Big data itself a concept of there is no concept like a transaction oriented is going to exist. So Spark is Spark is now the Spark is going to follow the same standards of what big data is. So going back to this. So now let's so this is the one of the things. So currently Spark is supporting all these kind of things. So Spark you can use uh, Spark to execute all the different kind of things. You can use Spark code to which executes MapReduce. Apart from that, Spark can be used with R, Spark can be used with machine libraries, Spark can be used for streaming, Spark can be used for SQL, Spark can be used for GraphX. So a Spark can be used in a huge number of fields. Okay, so it can be used exactly used number of us. So I'm going to let's go back to the directly to the presentation. And so the first of all, I want to so let's go back and start the Spark shell. 
So let me. So basically, I have downloaded the Spark from the website. Okay. So I just show you where you can download the Spark from the website too. So let x let's execute some of the examples in the Spark. So I'm just going to show you the Spark download just to show you the impact of how the Spark works, right? So if you look, if you go back and look at the download of the Spark, I think mostly you cannot see anything in the uh, any software like the way how the Spark is developed, the impact of what Spark is having. So let me show the location of Spark download and let's go back and do some of the examples in Spark after that. So basically, if you typically you can see the download of the Spark is going to provide you a very very interesting screen, right? So if you if you look at the Spark release download, right? This is going to be stunning. Stunning means this is going to be really stunning. You have a Spark release for every month. That is the importance of what's given to the Spark. That's what the future is moving. Every single thing is now subjected to the Spark. So for example, Hive. Hive is completely coming to Spark SQL. Mahout. Mahout is completely coming to the Spark machine language. Right? MapReduce has completely come to the Spark core. So Spark streaming. So like this, each and every single thing has been now coming to the Spark. So Spark is basically now going to provide answers for everything, not only on MapReduce. So now Spark is providing answer for how to do streaming, how to do uh, map, how to do the core logic faster in Hadoop. Okay, how to do machine language, how to do R. Okay, how to do how to do Python coding, how to do the I Python. So like this, due to the popularity of Spark is to a greater extent. The market pressure on Spark is to a greater extent, so you can basically technically see Spark getting released for every single month, which is never ever happened in anywhere, even in Apache also. This is the most highly incubated project in Apache. Okay, this is the most, the fastest growing, one of the most fastest growing you can never ever see. So Spark is ready for production. I think Sunny was since Spark is already used by a lot of organizations in the production. These are production releases. So you can't say like a complete production release in the universe because they they have a every month release. So you have to take a call and start using. That's all I can say directly. So let me open up the Spark shell. So bin slash Spark iPhone shell. So iPhone iPhone master local. So I'm opening up a Spark shell. Let's see how much time it takes to execute a program. Okay. So let's open up the Spark shell first. So Spark is going to provide a uh, Spark is completely developed into the Scala language, right? So Scala is the most widely used language. Okay, regarding program language similar to R or Java, you can execute complete R algorithms in Spark. The program language is always Java. Okay, in fact, it will be Scala a lot. So let's say I am going to uh, basically going to read a file. Okay, to note do notes of Spark run on a JVM. The complete big data runs on JVM. Kuna, there is no such thing. You can go outside the scope of JVM. So let me open up an Hadoop cluster. So let me open up an Hadoop cluster. So let me give me a minute. I'll open up an Hadoop cluster. Okay. So typically, I have a file in my Hadoop cluster. So I just hope I am just sharing you the Hadoop cluster. Let's say it's going to come up now. Okay. So there is a there is a file in my Hadoop cluster called as a slash vidb.md. Okay. So it's a very big file. Okay. So what I'm technically trying to do is I'm just going to read this file and after reading this file, I'm just basically going to find how many lines in the program having the letter A. Okay, so I'm basically going to count number of lines having the letter A or, or like, I'll find number of lines. So for instance, this line is having the letter A. This line is having the letter A, right? And so each and let's see which end of the lines is containing the letter A. That's what basically I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do first, I'm basically going to first thing load the load the file uh, into my Spark cluster because Spark is a in memory cluster, right? So let's basically uh, first let's consider let's say where of log file equal to uh, by typing is going to take a lot of time. I just paste the code because it's going to take a lot of time by typing the code, right? So let's first let's load the log file. So this is called REPL. This is called Scala. Scala is works on a read eval print loop where it immediately shows what you have done. Okay. So Scala is a complete functional programming language, which is the most fastest growing language now. And whenever you use with Spark, you have used Scala a lot. So let's say, and I am going to load this corresponding log file. Okay. You can't understand the syntax because this is completely Scala, which will be explaining you a lot when you come to the course. 
so basically i have one method called as so this is what the method right so this method basically says val lum as filter the lines whichever having the line contains a and count the number of lines this is what i'm going to do so i'm basically going to execute in spark just counting the number of lines which is having a okay this is what basically i'm trying to do so let's enter this let's see how much time it takes to find okay so it says the total number of lines which is having uh, letter a is 60 it has taken 199 milliseconds to execute this okay i can definitely see at anywhere the map reduce cannot do this much faster right. you can go anywhere you can execute anything you can take anything even you can take the things or anything uh, no but no nothing is going to execute this much faster okay this can be uh, this can be taken at any level at any point so basically what happened it has just executed uh, it, it has read a file from hdfs it is not read from the local file system it has read a file from hdfs it has did an analysis on the file it basically tries to find how many number of lines is having a it counted it and it printed it this all sequence of action happened in a span of 199 milliseconds which will definitely take at least a minute in your map program it will take a minute to do in your map program because of the sparks in memory computing cluster system so this is why i say spark is extremely extremely faster compared to this okay that's what it basically says if i can you show how you connect it to your Hadoop cluster uh, Devajit, actually i have configured that spark to that connect to the Hadoop cluster so if i if i start showing that again we require another one hour of session maybe we uh, well if you if you join the course right we'll show you how to configure spark etc find the budget Basically, in the Spark property files and the Spark while, while configuring, we just told to read from the Hadoop cluster. Find the widget. Because that might, uh, we will we'll go back and see some other examples of Spark streaming, etc. other things, right? So this definitely is one of the best ways of understanding, okay? So this is actually the Spark which I have run is basically not used any cluster. Basically, it has just used whatever it is. So if I want to use with the spark cluster right as i said spark it also is having a cluster so you can see this is the spark cluster right so i just going to open up the spark cluster spark is having a cluster like your resource manager so when you say iphone iphone master local right so it just executes without executing on any cluster you can also execute the same with the cluster also so i can also go back and execute the same so basically i can say uh, execute the same guy with the help of your cluster too Okay, you can also say that so let's go back and say i'm just going to say like can you execute the same thing in your cluster so i'm telling this time the master should be the cluster so when you come back and see now you can see basically a job getting submitted okay so it will submit a job here in the cluster so which will run across the application so let us So basically it has submitted a job and it has also finished that much first. Okay. So it submits a job to the cluster like how we are basically job tracker resource manager does the same thing spark it's having its own cluster. So iPhone iPhone master local doesn't start on the spark cluster. If you say in the spark cluster also you can do on the same. Right. Otherwise it's basically going to execute on yarn or something else. Right. So Scala is the best language to be followed. The same program can be executed in Java. The same program can be executed in Python. Okay. Scala, you can either execute in Python or you can either execute in Java. It's up to you. So because Spark is extremely, extremely faster. So now we are going to execute something called as Spark streaming, the same map reduce code, right? So what basically we are going to do is that we are going to have a folder. Okay, this is a basically a folder which is having no files at all, correct? So let's say I am basically going to start the Spark streaming program, okay? Which basically says I am going to continuously read the files live from the folder for every 20 seconds as i said near real time is not possible i'm giving a gap of 20 seconds for every 20 seconds whenever it gets a file there it's going to read the file it's going to execute the map reduce operation just like that okay so that's the beauty of this part so let's see that so let's execute the let's start the spark streaming first of all so let me start the spark streaming So this guy, is, this guy is going to continuously run 24 bar 7. Any file is going to keep coming into the particular location. Is going to keep on read for every 20 seconds and he's going to provide the word count program for that. Okay. 
Jyoti I just read your file from the Hadoop cluster Jyoti correct I showed you Hadoop cluster and read a file from the Hadoop cluster you can run it with Hadoop or without Hadoop that's what the point we are trying to say now now it's going to run without Hadoop right the, the file which we read is from actually from the Hadoop cluster only sorry you just let's create some other file fine Jyoti the example shows which read from the Hadoop cluster Say hello, how are you? But we do we something as par cluster? Yes, that's what Jody, I'm trying to say. We are we can either have spark cluster or Hadoop cluster. If you don't want to use Hadoop, you can completely use a spark cluster too. Okay. If you use Hadoop cluster, it's going to use the complete Hadoop cluster. If you use Spark cluster, it uses the Spark cluster. So it's up to your choice. They are providing both options. If 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 the data is already in the Hadoop cluster, then use Spark with Hadoop. If you're starting a fresh part, if you're starting a fresh project, then don't need to use Hadoop at all. You can use the Spark cluster. Okay, so yes, that's what you If I want to start speaking on the Spark cluster, it goes outside the scope of this particular webinar. You will get more information on the Spark cluster, etc., how it configured while you join the part of the course. Okay, fine. Let's say hello, how are you? Hello, how is life? Is everything fine? and life is better what do you mean by spark cluster okay so i think you missed the starting part of the session maybe okay spark cluster is same as hadoop cluster fine so if you want to understand completely into the spark cluster as i said which will go outside the context of this uh, webinar but spark cluster is like hadoop cluster what hadoop is trying to do the same thing spark cluster is trying to do if you want to completely avoid hadoop they give an option called a spark cluster if you are if you're starting from the scratch so you can store your data in your spark cluster and you can access the data from the spark cluster itself okay and if you want to completely understand the difference as i said it will go completely outside the context of this particular webinar we'll take it when you when you join the course we'll explain in details but the concept is same both are going to store the data so let's save this particular file and let's go back to the spark streaming let's see it picks up this file okay fine sopna See you guys, you picked up that particular file. Fine. You just picked up, you just have to give the location. So let's give another file now. Right? Let's take another file now. So on the fly I'm changing. So I how I I how hello. Hello, hi. So on the fly, this is changed. Let's go here. Save. Let's wait for 20 seconds. It might have did it. We have to go top and see. So it picked up, right? Hi, how to, hello to. So it's picking just like that, correct? It's picking just like that. I'm adding a file. It's keep picking up that file. This is what streaming is all about. You are keep on adding the file. You can't do this in MapReduce. You're just adding one one file to the folder. Just keep on picking that file. Just keep on doing the processing on that particular file. That's what Spark streaming is all about. Let's add one more file. So if the more the more you add the file, it's going to keep on pick that particular file. It's going to add that file. The file. The Spark streaming submit MapReduce job. Spark is having no relation with MapReduce, Mike. Spark is having a own technology called a Scala language. It writes a scalar code and it executes. It does a replacement of a map reduce. Okay, there is absolutely no relation between map reduce and Spark. Spark replaces map reduce. Fine, Mike. What would the maximum data size that would be stored in a Spark cluster? Uh, Kunal, I think uh, to understand more on the Spark cluster, right, because as I said, I am not going to discuss on Spark cluster now, but a Spark cluster is like an Hadoop cluster. Do you have anything like that is a maximum data can be stored in the Hadoop cluster. Can you define? Can you define technically? This is the amount of data I can store in my Hadoop cluster. Anywhere down the line, can we say this is the maximum amount of data I can store in my cluster? You can't define. 
because a cluster is something where you can keep on add number of machines parallelly. So Spark, a cluster means it's a Spark or Hadoop. A cluster means they are going to run that many number of machines parallel. So the more the machines you have, that many number of data. Okay. So th that's why there is no specific node limit in the cluster. Kuna. There is no specific node limit and all. Okay, cluster is a cluster. End of the day, a cluster is a cluster. You can add any number of things. How the data is going to be stored in the cluster is the way how they are going to represent. Okay, that's that's that Hadoop and Spark cluster is going to do. Can, can the procedure can be changed as it is 20 seconds? Yes, it's just a program. I I have made a 20 seconds. You can see here. Yes, I made a 20 seconds. You can change it to less than that also. We don't need to love pig I wedge space if you choose Spark. Yes, Janeshwar. You don't need anything. What about other file? The previous file is also picked. That is already processed debugged. Streaming is something which is keep on looking for the next files. It won't process the same file again and again. If you want to process the same file, then be, that, be, that is not streaming actually. Then that's, that's not streaming, that's a normal uh, file input output operation. Right, can you show the streaming again? Yes, it will be keep on running, it won't stop. It will be keep on running for every 20 seconds. So it will be just going on. It is extremely, extremely faster, and it is uh, it is the most fast. Actually. Okay. I just submitted the Spark streaming scale up program, Jyoti. I started the Spark streaming scale up program. Nothing else. Okay. Can we access Spark cluster data in Hadoop? Not possible, Shiva. You can't do that. It is by key is one of the scalar function pratik and uh, so means when you, it's, it's a scalar code which will be expanding you on more when you when you do this course right will be expanding that's, that's a scalar functionality action the scalar functionality of writing the map code. can we can we not append data to the existing file uh, uh prashita that's not hadoop that's not big data okay that's not big data actually big data means overwrite you can't do in big data. Spark SQL does a scalar code and Spark completely runs in scalar Jyoti. Everything in scalar. Okay. Can we record tweet streaming? You can do anything, Rajkumar, as long as that the data is keep pumping up. Okay. Can we write the same program in Java? Yes, yes, Ashish, you can write the same program in Java. Not a problem. You write in scalar, you can write in Java, not a problem. You can do Twitch streaming, Rajkumar. So in the in fact, in the course, we'll show you how to do the Twitch streaming. Can we record this webinar stream? Oh, fine. Okay, fine. How do you differentiate HTL process with DMX HTL process with Spark? Spark is completely Spark process is run. Spark process will run on terabytes of data, petabytes of data. Should. I don't know whether DMX HTL and can do that much scale. Okay. Can we link to an external field? Yes, we can. We will be showing in the example. We will be, we'll be, we'll, in the course, we will be doing the same thing. Let me start the streaming. Okay. So it will be keep on running. Does it convert the code to Scala? I have written the code to Scala. Uh, no, 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 no need to do. Uh, see, Scala and Java both runs on JVM. So anything can be run on JVM, it will understand you. Whenever it is file is added, is it applying the same job? Yes, yes, it is doing the same job, waiting for the new files. Mike, you can put it in that way. It's a stream operation, right? It continuously streams and runs. Okay, I thought that's in Spark 1.4 does Python support uh, streaming? Uh, Python, no, Spark supports streaming. Python is just a way of uh, writing the code. I will check back that uh, Arthika, okay? I'll check back on the same. No, Santosh, Spark cluster internally works on a complete different uh, perspective, Santosh. 
okay so as i said uh, i am this scope i am not going to discuss that now because that's a completely different scope altogether fine sandosh can we spark into a traditional database for processing no you can't do in traditional database and element spark and all you can't do bigger as different databases different right they work on petabytes and better they work on parallel distributed processing system they cannot work on relations how to use yarn and spark yeah there are ways to do even yarn and spark also nanishwar and uh, means i don't have examples here but in the part of the course we'll even show that how to do the yarn and spark also means we have a way of how to submit yarn and spark also we'll be having a complete session on that okay when you join the particular course we'll be also providing the same thing Spark is also in the same USP as Hadoop without running on the community hardware with the replication uh, factor. But Spark is uh, under times faster than Hadoop uh, Mapper is Kunal. So it's a huge difference. Okay. Uh, using Spark on top of Hadoop cluster, basically everything should be uploaded in memory so the Spark can work, right? That will be taken care by Yarn. We don't need to upload uh, Arita. That's, 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 uh, that's the work of the Yarn. Fine. Is Marshall work as yeah. same as Marshall's layoff for the PFS? Then is RAM allocation play role in the config? The RAM allocation, everything will be taken care of by the cluster internally. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. That's the responsibility of the young. That's the responsibility of the Spark cluster. Anything else to about Spark streaming, Spark streaming course? I mean, uh, in the course, we provide more details on Spark streaming. We will do with the actual Twitter streaming and we'll be showing how it comes from the Twitter. Uh, in the course, we provide more information. Okay. The best thing about the Spark memory allocation, etc., is that Yarn is the person who takes care of it, so we don't need to worry about that. But that's one advantage we have compared to the other things. Okay, so I hope uh, everybody got an understanding of maybe I, I won't say complete understanding, but just to get a glance of what Spark does, what's advantages of Spark for map producing and all Spark is used. So. I request all of you to join the course where you can get better understanding of how the Spark can be done and all the rest of the things also. Okay, and please post all your questions. Please post all your questions to the uh, support team. They will take care of answering your questions. And then uh, also you can contact the support team about the course, what's the fee structure, etc. All the other things. Fine. And thank you all. Thanks for the webinar today. And we'll make sure all this are live, all the recorded session today, and the examples will be available to you all. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. And one more thing to you all, I just provide my email ID as well as support mail ID if you want to contact at the same. Okay, and just put the mail smooth email ID so that can. this is my email ID saga.action.gmail.com and also you can contact the support like uh, I hope uh, did, can anybody quickly confirm you are able to see the email ID? Okay. So if you want to contact my uh, support team or my team, you can also do the same thing. And yes, thank you, thank you very much. And yeah, thanks for.